Well, let's begin our service. If you wish to follow along with this service, you can scan the QR code on the screen or go to rivergrassuu.org slash 2023 to find the order of service there. Is that good? Okay. Welcome to the beloved community at River of Grass Unitarian Universalist Congregation, both here in person and love streamed on Zoom and Facebook Live. We celebrate all the ways we find to gather our beloved community in body and in spirit as we go and grow and flow the river way. I'm Diane Diaz and my pronouns are she and her. You here in this room, we welcome you you on Zoom or Facebook, live, we welcome you. However you made your way here among us this morning, we welcome you. Let's pause together to enter into this holy time together as we connect again with the holy by any name and the light of love within us all. 
while we remain mindful that not everyone can breathe easy, nor find it easy to breathe. Let us pause here in the headlong rush of our lives to breathe into our time together. In this congregation, it is our mission to nurture our spirits love intentionally and create a just and healthy planet in our enduring search for truth, meaning, and faith. What we share here is not an unchanging dogma, but an affirmation that we are called to be agents of love and justice and to build a world where everyone is cherished for who they are. This morning's service, Justice Sunday, is from our Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, the UUSC. They put our UU values and our seven principles into action by advancing human rights around the world. An annual spring program of the UUSC, Justice Sunday, is a day of learning, commitment, and support for human rights. This year's service focuses on what it means to be in solidarity with human rights activists frontline communities around the world. This morning, with our call to worship, we continue our monthly theme of awakening. With this reading, number 435, from Kathleen McTeague. We come together this morning to remind one another to rest for a moment on the forming edges of our lives to resist the headlong tumble into the next moment until we claim for ourselves awareness and gratitude, taking the time to look into another's faces and see their community, the reflection of our own eyes, this house of laughter and silence, memory and hope is hallowed by our presence together. This morning, we open our hearts with delight as our River of Grass Choir brings us this month's theme hymn, number 396, to open our time of awakening. I know this rose will open. Please stand as you are able. The flaming chalice is a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist tradition, a beacon of religious liberty shining through generations, <clears throat> now ours to hold high. 
As we light our chalice together this morning with Welcoming the Stranger by Tracy Bleakney, let us join our voices with these words in English and Spanish, translated by Teresa Soto. A child journeys far from home, fearful and brave, in need of safe harbor, guided by this chalice, May we seek to understand the causes of flight, like the comfort of a candle flickering in a window of darkness. Let us welcome this child into our home with warmth, nourishment, and love. Would we not want the same for our own child, lost and alone in a strange land? Un niño viaja lejos de su casa, temeroso y valiente, careciendo de un puerto de asilo. Guiados por este cáliz, tratemos de comprender las causas de huir, como el consuelo de una vela encendida en una ventana oscura. Demos bienvenida a este niño a nuestra casa con simpatía, alimento y cariño. ¿No quisiéramos lo mismo por nuestro propio niño perdido y solo en tierra extranjera? In the light of love, let us renew our covenant as we say together, love is the spirit of this congregation and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. El amor es el espíritu de esta congregación, y el servicio su ley principal. Esta es nuestra gran promesa, vivir juntos en paz, buscar la verdad a través del amor, y ayudarnos Mutuamente. This morning, we will continue our worship together with this deepening music, hymn number 155, Circle Round for Freedom. Please stand if you are able. In our community each week, we share pieces of our lives. We take a moment to share our joys and sorrows and gratitudes here with people who love us for exactly who we are, where we are right now. Here in the room, we will share from the book. If you are in Zoom and would like to share a thought, a prayer, a joy, or concern with us in this moment, write it in the chat and we will lift them up together. So now, in the quiet of this hour, if there is something in your own heart that you wish to mark without words this morning, you're invited to come forward and drop a stone of reflection in this water as we hold one another in sacred community. For as William James wrote, we are like islands in the sea, separate on the surface, but connected in the deep. Let us share a moment of reflection, connecting us to all who are in need.
We lift these things, spoken and unspoken, written and unwritten, asking that our hearts be seen, even as we come seers of hearts, that we may serve one another and those beyond our walls with love and thankfulness today and every day. Amen, amen, amin, aho, ashe, namaste, blessed be, and so it is. Let us now sing together our response to these sharings of pieces of our lives. This morning, we mark our UUSC heritage in the life and work of the Reverend Waitstill and Martha Sharp, the founders of the UUSC. This is our heritage. In 1939, Waitstill Sharp was the minister at the Unitarian Church in Wellesley, Massachusetts, and his wife Martha was a noted social worker. Motivated by their faith and moral outrage about what was happening in Europe, the Sharps accepted an invitation by Frederick May Elliott, president of the American Unitarian Association, to help members of the Unitarian Church in Czechoslovakia. Arriving in, Pro in February 1939, the Sharps aided a number of Jews to leave the country, which had come under Nazi control. The Sharps continued their work, helping Jews and intellectuals escape until August 1939, leaving Prague when warned of their possible arrest by the Gestapo. They then landed in Lisbon, Portugal, on a mission to help refugees escape from war-torn France. Making their way into the Vichy-controlled France, they sought ways to help fugitives escape from Nazi terror, Jews and non-Jews alike. The Sharps, along with several others, helped several thousand escape, focusing on political refugees. This work led to the formation of the Unitarian Service Committee. Here, in our own time, we find hope in the work of a UUSC's Just Works work camp program, and people like Kevin McNamara, this is our hope. It was the early summer of 1996, and perhaps there wasn't much happening in the news. Somehow, the news media grabbed a hold of a story of black churches that were being burned down in the cell. Before 1996, this arson had been ignored in the media, but this summer, it somehow became newsworthy. The UUSC heard about a work camp to rebuild burned black churches being organized by the Quaker Monthly Meeting of Washington, D.C. The UUSC put out a call for volunteers. I responded, and I eventually wound up in a small rural town, Bolige, in northern Alabama, where I joined about 25 others. My roommate was Kevin McNamara, and we soon discovered that we were both UUs. The second slide shows some of the volunteers nailing shingles on the church we are building, the Little Zion Baptist Church. The volunteers actually carried the shingles up by putting a few on their shoulders and going up a ladder. I found this experience to be transforming. The energy level was incredibly high. The media attention raised the excitement level in the work camp. It was an example of this month's worship theme of awakening because it is likely that when you are transformed, you are awakened. The work camp theme, work is love made visible, was part 
of this awakening. This is a photo of Kevin seated, myself and Mark in the entrance to the church. Harold Confer. Oh, Kevin started to talk with a director of a work camp, Harold Confer, about the rebuilding. Harold was overwhelmed, partly because there were a lot of news, news photographers and reporters visiting the work camp frequently. So Kevin took over organizing the volunteers in the following weeks of a work camp. The UUSC expanded the work camps into their Just Works program, which continued for about 10 years. Kevin led the Just Works work camps for several summers at the Ogallo Sioux Reservation in North Dakota. This is our UUSC hope. We sustain and strengthen this beloved community and its work in our world through the gifts of our time, our skills, our love, and our money. Each Sunday, half of our undesignated offering goes to LifeNet for Families, which provides meals, clothing, support for those in need here in Broward County. The other half supports our mission and ministry at River of Grass. Ushers, please come forward to receive the offering. You can scan the QR code or text the number on the screen to donate. You can also find several ways to give on the donate page on our website at riverofgrassuu.org. We sustain and strengthen our service committee, the UUSC, and its work advancing human rights in the world through our gifts. Today we are celebrating the ways our Unitarian Universalist faith calls us to be in solidarity with human rights defenders around the world. Your support ensures that in these perilous times with threats to human rights expanding, our UUSC response will expand. Ushers, please come forward again to receive the special UUSC offering. You can scan or text.
Oh, I hope the slides come up. <laughs> Today's wisdom story is called Together by Mona Damluji and illustrated by Inosanto Nagara. One star shines as distant light. Okay, and when stars shine together, they make our galaxy. Oh, good. Yes, I don't have, Whew, I don't have to hold it up. <laughs> One bee wanders through my garden, and when bees work together, they are a colony. One bird calls into the wind. And when birds call together, they make a cacophony. One tree grows toward the sun. And when trees grow together, they make a canopy. Oh, one voice sings a tender song. And when voices sing together, they make harmony. One instrument plays an unforgettable beat. And when instruments play together, they are a symphony. One mountain rises to a mighty peak. And when mountains rise together, they are majesty. One wave is a surfer's dream. And when waves move together, they are an endless sea. One of us can walk, can make a home, and when we come together, we are family. One of us can love with all our heart, and when we love together, we build community. One of us can speak up for justice, and when we speak up together, we create a world of possibility. And now let us sing our child <laughs> off to class. Bless you and send you on your way. We love you and bless you today. River of Grass is in our annual pledge drive, opening doors to tomorrow. And in this morning, this morning, Rebecca Rice will talk about why she gives her time, her talent as a videographer, and her treasure to River of Grass. Good morning. My name is Rebecca Rice. My, hi. <laughs> My pronouns are she and her. And I first came to the river in the summer of 2017, a year after my wife Rose and I uh, moved from Dallas to Sunrise. Now, the five years prior to that were a little bit challenging for us. Um, from 2011 to 2015, both of my parents passed away. Um, Two aunts that I was very close to also passed away. Two very dear friends passed away. And four of our very dear friends moved away. So we were, look, I think Dallas was pretty much done with us and we were ready to move on. We needed to move on. Um, so we started looking around and, you know, where we wanted to take the next chapter of our lives and we decided on Southeast Florida, even though I'd never been to Southeast Florida before. I've been to Key West, been to um, um, Fort Myers, um, but not to Southeast Florida and certainly not to Sunrise and Davy. Well, we made the move anyway and the only person we knew here was my brother-in-law. So we were really starting all over again and now we were fortunate that both of us were able to find jobs. And so it took us about six months to get settled into our house and then, you know, another six months or so to get settled into our jobs and, and our lives and get the cats settled down and, and all of that. And so about the middle, of the middle of the summer of 2017, I started thinking that I really wanted to find a spiritual home. Um, so I started looking around 
Now, I grew up in the Presbyterian Church, which actually was a very positive experience. Um, but I didn't really want to go back to the Presbyterian Church because it seemed a little structured for me now. And I'd also spent some time, about, about a decade, at the Unity Church of Dallas. But I felt like I had done that, and I really wanted to move forward and get a little bit, just something else. I wasn't sure exactly what, but a little bit more. And I had friends who were Unitarian Universalists, one really dear couple friend who live in Oakland, California, and a handful of others who are still in Dallas who went to the Unitarian Church of Dallas. Um, so I started thinking about Unitarian Universalism. And I went online, and I started researching, and I found River of Grass. And the, at that moment, the best part of it was that uh, your, the River of Grass was like five minutes from my house. And, and that meant that, you know, I would actually show up. Because there was, there was a, uh, as you know, there was a Unitarian Universalist Church in Fort Lauderdale and a Unity Church in Fort Lauderdale, but that's 30 minutes away, and I couldn't count on myself to show up on a regular basis, so I, I gave River of Grass a shot, and I felt very comfortable right away. Uh, Y'all checked off a lot of my boxes, the commitment to social justice, human rights, you're a very, very welcoming community to the LGBTQ plus um, group, which is very important to me and my wife, because we didn't want to go somewhere where we weren't welcome. Y'all have made us feel very welcome. Um, and over time, I've made some really great friends here, and I was able to be become part of the Movies for Change group, uh, which it, for a lifelong film nerd like me is right up my alley. So if you all ever think about uh, coming to join us one Wednesday night a month to talk about movies, please come. It's really fun. So uh, I found River of Grass. Um, and over time, as I got more involved with y'all, what, what surprised me, or what I didn't know, I'm not sure it really surprised me, but I just didn't know it until I experienced it with y'all, I found out how resilient this group of people are. How for 25 years, you guys have just grown and flowed with the river and just made it work. And sometimes it seems like it was just by sheer force of will. But you've done it, and I was really impressed by that. And that really kind of, you know, added to my, like my little checklist of things I was, didn't know I was looking for, but found here with this group of wonderful people who are very welcoming. Um, no guilt, no dogma. Um, everybody seems to be really in, you know, working toward emotional health, which was very important to Rose and me because we both battle depression and emotional health. And being aware of that and striving for that has been a big, big thing for us. Um, so fa I found all of that here. Um, and there's one other thing that sort of on, on the notion of resilience and openness and what makes River of Grass different. There's a Facebook meme floating around that some of you may have seen. It goes like this. There's a college professor who invites a Buddhist monk to come speak to their class. And the day the Buddhist monk shows up, the professor introduces the monk. The monk doesn't say anything initially. He just silently walks to the whiteboard, picks up a marker, and writes, everybody wants to change the world, but no one wants to do the dishes. Yeah, everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to do the dishes. And I reflected on that and thought about it and realized that, you know what, that's exactly the untrue for River of Grass. This place is exactly the opposite of that. Everybody here wants to help mom do the dishes. In fact, I've seen, all, I've seen every single one of you get up and actually help mom do the dishes every day. And that's really important. And for that reason and all the other, the others that I have mentioned, uh, I give my time, my talents, and my hard-earned cash to support the river and keep, help keep you all flowing and growing. And the reason you all are so successful is that you do it together. And the world needs more of your example of standing on the side of love. So I hope you'll join me in making your contribution this year to keep the river flowing and growing. We're starting on a new chapter. Some really exciting things are coming up. I can just feel it in my bones. So thank you all for being so welcoming here to me and my wife. And uh, thank you all.
Is there an update? There is. Ooh. We're oh. on. <laughs> Go for it. I'll read, I'll read by myself. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Leanna Bresnahan. I'm co-chair with my marvelous uh, co, what do we call you? Co-chair, I know, but I had a cute word, but it just flew out of my head, so whatever. Um, we're here to give you an update. <laughs> Conspirator, there we go. So we're, we're here to give you an update on the annual pledge drive, um, which you all know the theme is very appropriately, I think, opening doors to tomorrow as we get ready very soon to move into our new home. Um, our dates are March 3rd through March 31st. So we're well into the pledge drive now. And we want to tell you that there is a website, well, on our website, you can now go um, to the website and you can see our brochure that we put together, which has a lot of very useful information, not only inspirational messages from Rev. Amy and from Kathy, our president, and also from Karen, our religious uh, education director, but also lots of pictures from some of our moments of, from the last year and also a UUA giving guide, lots of stuff there. So please do check it out. Um, the website is, or the, the link is up there. Um, but it also came out in, in our weekly email. And you should have received a special email this week. Did everybody see it? it? Came out on Thursday or Friday. Okay, excellent. So we are here to tell you where we are so far. Last year we told you that we, or last week we told you that we have $105,000 in pledges. And this week we are here to announce that we are now 61% of the way toward our goal. And what does that mean, Rita? <laughs> All right, so we know that the number is going up, so this is not an easy task. We are now at $138,000. $386. That's 61% of our goal. So we want you to know we are truly, truly grateful for every single pledge that is made. And we hope everybody who has not had the chance yet to submit your pledge, please do so. The best way to do it is online. You should have received in the mail also a physical pledge card. So if that makes you more comfortable, you can also do it that way. But the easiest way to do it is just by going to our webpage. It's a very short um, form to fill out. And we hope you'll do it this week. That will reduce stress on, on your two co-chairs here. <laughs> so anything else I forgot? OK. Make a statement. You know, this $225,000 goal is just a little bit above what we did last year. And, but it really tells us that we need to grow even though our numbers are a little low as we start to build our community better now that we'll be back in our new location, which, as Rev. Amy has told us, we think it's going to be the last Sunday of this month. Fingers crossed. We'll let you know if that actually happens. So please think very deeply about this community and what it means to you. We love you both. And thank you, Reed, uh, uh, Rebecca. That was a wonderful. Thank you, Rita and Rebecca. We're so glad you found us. Wow. Since we've been unable to download the UUSC sermon video, we will have instead this shorter UUSC reflection reading this morning. It is. Beyond Borders, Community Care as the Deepest Act of Global Solidarity by Rachel Gore Freed. There is another story to tell about these same moments of crises. It is a story of how networks of locally led civil society organizations create nimble mutual aid systems and provide the most radical forms of care and the political solidarity woven into these acts of resistance. These networks are run by volunteers 
often without access to funding or resources who forge new systems through mutual collective action and collaboration. During a so-called crisis, these networks organized despite current power structures, failed public institutions, and inept government policies. Through mutual aid, these volunteers are reclaiming and building community power. Hungary, Serbia, border. Political borders are often areas where I've seen vibrant community building and the coordination of collective needs by volunteers in place of systems or structures that do not serve to uphold human dignity. I've seen this at the borders of Serbia and Hungary, where mutual aid networks serve to support families during migrant pushbacks. And I've heard about the networks near May Salt at the Thai-Burma border, where groups are organizing support to get folks out of Burma to safety. During my time on the ground in Warsaw, Poland, I learned about a group called Grupa Granica, an informal network of Polish NGOs, activists and volunteers that formed in response to human, human, <laughs> humanitarian crises at the Polish-Belarusian border to provide humanitarian medical and legal aid to migrants fleeing through the forests there. Many of the volunteers lived locally and came together to organize care and refuge for those arriving. I had the chance to witness a joy-filled reunification of two volunteers who were organizing together during the intense time in 2001 and who have since been supporting refugee receptions throughout Poland both prior to the Russian invasion and after. I was invited to a USC supported convening held by Voices in Poland that brought together local feminist networks from across Moldova, Belarus, Ukraine, Romania, and Poland. Activists from the region shared some of the same themes. Many activists were on the verge of burnout and had a deep distrust of large international aid organizations and multilateral United Nations coordination mechanisms. They shared a sense of connection together during their time recharging and recentering their work. Together, the convening facilitators provided trauma-informed sessions and created space to identify shared frontline responses and to strategize about infrastructures and resources available to sustain their network's organizing needs ahead. Resourcing these feminist and migrant justice organization networks to continue their work, supporting community care and community building is a vital way we can engage in global solidarity work beyond borders. We can tend to our own communities, keep our focus on global system inequities, and weave together our narrative, speaking truth to power that comes with recreating the world through the lens of equity and self-determination. This morning, we will conclude our worship together with this closing music, hymn number 1021, Lean On Me. Please stand again if you're able.
Okay. Ah, now to the announcements. Ta da! At River of Grass, we offer many ways to live our Unitarian Universalist faith in action. You'll find them in our weekly email, our Facebook page, and our website, riverofgrassuu.org. Here are some upcoming opportunities to fulfill the mission and vision of this congregation and other announcements for the life of this beloved community. Faith development. This Sunday, in our class for kids, we'll continue to explore spring, the season of new beginnings, through exploring the gift of transformation. We as Unitarian Universalists describe ourselves as a living tradition which means we expect changes as we live and grow. We'll look at how transformation can be exciting and beautiful. It also can be messy and hard. And we will create lovely butterflies. Oh, I'm over there. Hmm. And, uh, and the symbol of change, of course. Here's get ready for the full moon daughters spring, spring camping trip, which will be from Friday, March 22nd, through Sunday, March 24th. We're heading to West Highlands Hammock State Park near Sebring. This is among Florida's earliest state parks and home to a magnificent old growth hem hammock. Tent or hotel options are available. This trip is open to all women and girls and those who are non-binary or identify as female. Space is limited. You can sign up by emailing Full Moon Daughters at riverofgrassuu.org. Or look for the sign up sheet at the welcome table at the top of the stairs. Okay. The March movies is stamped from the beginning. This movie explores the roots of racism in America through the eyes of African American women. Relatively popular female historical figures get the celebratory treatment usually reserved for history's great men. The director opens the documentary by asking his contributor, what is wrong with black people? The question elic elicits a range of responses, an exasperated chuckle, a sigh, a few raised eyebrows, and one full-throated <laughs> laugh. We will meet via Zoom on Wednesday, March 13th at 7 p.m. to discuss this movie. And contact Steve Jens Rockow at movies at riverofgrassuu.org for the Zoom link. It's M, small m, big U, big U, small v, small i, small e. Okay, any other announcements that I may have missed? If not, our closing words are reading number 686 by Mark Bellatini. Go in peace. Live simply, gently, at home in yourselves. Act justly. Speak justly. Remember the depth of your own compassion. Forget not your power in the days of your own powerless. Uh, do not desire to be wealthier than your peers and stint not your hand of charity. Practice forbearance. Honor the earth. Speak the truth or not. Take care of your bodies, for you are a good gift. Crave peace for all people in the world, beginning with yourselves. And go as you go with the dream of that peace alive in your hearts. Our extinguishing is written by Marjorie Killeran. We extinguish this chalice flame, daring to carry forward this vision of this free faith that freedom, reason, and justice will one day prevail across this nation and across this earth. As our chalice is extinguished, let, us light, let its light live on in the minds and hearts and souls of each and every one of you. Carry that flame with you as you leave this place and share it with those you know, and most especially with those you've yet to meet. In these changing times, let us be all the more vigilant 
to hold before us a vision of the world transformed and dare to transform ourselves to make it so. Until we meet again, shine on! And of course, those on Zoom, thanks for joining us today and feel free to unmute yourselves and greet each other. For everyone else here, please gather in the back for refreshments.